Welcome to the presentation on CPK and normality analysis in DFR Soft, which is a low cost, high, re high quality reliability statistics and physics tool. <clears throat> We're going to start by uh, just looking at CPK and uh, understanding it a little bit. Uh, so, it really is a measure, um, it's an index that measures how uh, capable is your process. Um, at, and it requires uh, a reasonable sample size, which we'll discuss, and normality of your data to be accurate. Uh, first, we'll look at uh, process capability ratio. Um, <clears throat> it's basically the process capability you can think of as how many uh, six sigmas can I fit in to my lower and upper spec limit. So that's really what the equation is saying. <clears throat> And here's an example. If I have a, an item with a 27 to 33 megahertz and um, my uh, standard deviation is 1 megahertz, <clears throat> um, 1 times 6, which is on the bottom, uh, divided by 6 on the top, the upper minus the lower, gives me a CP of 1. Here's another thing. If I bring in my limits uh, somewhat and I still have a sigma of 1, I'm between 29 and 30, 31 megahertz. Uh, my CP is uh, 0.33. Now one thing about the process capability, it doesn't really care where you are, whether you're really between your limits or not. Uh, so it's going to be the same number uh, because it's not sensitive to that. So they have the CPK index, <clears throat> which is a relative to your mean. So it's your mean minus your lower spec limit divided by 3 sigma, or your upper spec limit minus uh, your mean divided by 3 sigma. So, as an example, in this case, uh, this does care. <clears throat> the CPK lower limit is 5, where the CPK upper limit, we can see, is not very good because it's struggling. Most of your data is outside of your 32 megahertz. So your CP uh, number is minus 1, which is a very poor number for CPK. <clears throat> now, one other thing we want to mention is a decent sample size. Uh, how many devices should I test? Well, <clears throat> according to the uh, central limit theorem, we'd like to have about 30. Uh, you can get a nice mean still with a lower number of data points, but your uh, <clears throat> standard deviation starts to uh, vary. Another thing is uh, your target for your CPK. A good process, most customers want to see something around 1.33 or higher, and here's some guidelines for that. Another thing that you should realize how strong the CPK is, because it gives you a really good indication of yield. So let's go over to DFR Soft and see how we uh, do analysis on that. So when you open up DFR Soft, you're going to come to the index page, and you're going to there's a lot of tools that you can use. So you'll scroll down. You have reliability tools. Uh, you'll have engineering tools, and physics -y tools corrosion analysis and stuff like that, come down your cross your quality page, and we're going to hyperlink over, or you can even tab over. There's a tab. It's in Excel. It's very friendly. <clears throat> and I have a data set that I'd like to look at. And the first thing I want to do is look at the normality. And I prepared the data set way down below. This is the quality page where you can do your CBK up top. There's a SPC, which is another uh, thing that presentation that we'll have. And uh, <clears throat> there's some lot tolerance, uh, lot information, sampling size. And here is your normality statistic plotting uh, information. And here's my data. I've entered it. I have uh, 60 data points that I've already entered for uh, speed <clears throat> of getting the, the, for the presentation. And the analysis is uh, provided right around here. And you get your mean, your standard deviation. You get things like your sample skewness, and there's a pop-ups telling you what that is. Uh, and you want to measure your normality so you can actually see it. Uh, you have a histogram analysis. Uh, you can change your bin size. One of the stronger plots in the DFR soft is the normal, uh, what is called the normal probability plot, uh, regression plot. And uh, that's provided right here. And it shows you a good uh, indication of how normal your data is. You can also look at your sample skewness. Uh, this is the residual, <clears throat> which is explained as different kinds uh, relative to 3. And uh, it's a very good number. It's 0.36 for this distribution 
uh, which is really uh, they subtract the three out in Excel. Uh, so you'll have to look at that definition. So now coming over, we're uh, a little bit closer. We can see uh, the graph and the um, uh, it's a very good fit, the regression analysis. And we have uh, sigma in the mean here and the uh, normality fit 0.997. So it's a, a very good number and the data is very normal. So we're going to look at these. Uh, we take the mean and the sigma and we go up top. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit. And <clears throat> we've entered that into the CPK uh, section for in the quality tool uh, area. And there's our 3.27 mean and 1.72. Now our upper and lower spec limit, let me zoom out a little bit. <clears throat> this has a full CPK analysis, so you can do relative to your upper and your lower, or you can do your upper or just your lower. Uh, and notice all the pop-up helps you get, <clears throat> plus this video that you can hyperlink to. <clears throat> uh, and uh, for uh, we put in an upper spec limit of 9 and a lower spec limit of minus 3. So in this case, the CPK, the full CPK is 1.11. Now the upper spec limit is 1. Point, uh, is actually, it's, this is the dominant one. It's, it takes the lower of the two. And here's the two, the lower and the upper. And here's the uh, upper uh, 1.11. So uh, let's look at that. Gives you your CPK number. And your process capability, uh, uh, 3.33, that's uh, indicated there. And it gives you some statistics uh, about your, the one-sided yield, the two-sided yield. And below, you can do some analysis as well. If you take that CPK and you say play a what-if game, what if it was 1.33 instead of 1.1? Right now, I have a, uh, there's my PPM. Fourth one-sided PPM of 434 and a two-sided of 868. What if it was 1.33 and I press a return? <clears throat> you see the PPM drops down dramatically, which is the amount of uh, parts per million of your data that would be outside of the <clears throat> upper and lower spec limit, and your yield would be 99.96. Instead, uh, for the one-sided, for example, 1.11 where the yield is 99.95. Another thing, uh, so there's a lot of analysis tools here. You can play what if games. If I want to get this yield or that yield, what CPK do I need? Uh, you can also uh, look at your uh, confidence bounds around your CPK. Uh, we had 1.11 as a CPK. If we look at the 95%, uh, the number of units that was uh, presented in the data below was 60. So it's telling me my CPK value, <clears throat> the bounds on that, could be as high as 1.33 and could be as low as 0.89. So that means I actually may have a process that might meet a customer requirement <clears throat> that is higher, but it also could be lower. So I need to get eventually build up my data set to uh, solidify what my actual C process capability is. So there you have it. This um, ends the uh, DFR soft uh, tutorial uh, and explains how to use CPK analysis in DFR soft. Uh, we hope you give our software a try. <clears throat> We're uh, located at dfrsoft.com. And uh, again, the index page, uh, you can download it. You get a 30-day free trial. Uh, I think you'll uh, find an amazing amount of uh, powerful tools in DFR soft, not just this uh, quality tool. All uh, right. Thank you very much.